For those of you who don't know me, my name's Jackson. I coach at the Hawks here with the NBL1 men and also the under 20s. Um, so I coach a little older age group. So I will, at the end of the session, for those of us who are coaching older age groups, go through attacking zones um, because I know uh, this year my team moved into under 16s and I haven't seen a, I haven't seen anything but a zone the entire the entire season. So I'll go through that right at the end and I'll try and make that as interactive as we can. Then I'll also go through. Tra uh, tra planning a training session on the whiteboard so you guys can kind of give me some constraints about what you might see at your training session, say so X amount of balls, X amount of players, and we can kind of go through how I would, how I'd plan it out. Is that cool? Is that cool? You're all coaches, you should be loud as hell. Okay, so the first thing I want to get through, because I'm trying to go through offense, we're going to talk about like uh, trying to simulate transition in the half court. It's quite difficult. How many of us have a full court at training? Good, okay. Um, does anyone train with a team near on or close to the level that they are on the other half court to them? Or is it all, yeah, close? Yeah, so you can do some things in the full court there. I was gonna go through that, but I think I'll just stick to the half court stuff because most of us seem like we're just going through the half court. So we'll stick to that. Something I personally don't like at all ever in, in basketball is weaves, but I, it's the only way I can simulate this. So stick with me here, but we're gonna go through a three man weave up to half court. Whoever catches the ball at half court puts the ball down, and then the other two players are playing offense back. You're simulating a two on one and transition. The only rules are for the boys, is that whoever has, whoever's on offense, they need to enter the court from a different side of the keyway to each other. So they cannot be on the same side of the court. If they enter the court on the same side, that means the score doesn't count and they go to the back of the line. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Boys, yep. you cannot enter the keyway from the same side. Ready? Go. Oh, we, yeah, good. Here we go. Whoever puts it down. Whoever puts it down. Good. Put it down. Go get it. Go. Good. There you go. Well done. Oh, lots of passes. Okay, here we go. Next up. Next up. Go, go, go. Let's go. Move, boys. Move, move, move. Put it down. Grab it. Oh, gosh. What a intense. Good. Let's go. Go get it. Okay. And freeze there. Okay. So that's the basic concept of the drill. Trying our best to manipulate the half court to become transition like. Um, because it is quite difficult, like when you're in transition, people are running full pelt for 94 feet and it's hard to try and manipulate the half court into that, but that's quite a good way. Now the next constraint I'm gonna put on them, so the same constraints we already had, but also after you pick the ball up, you only have four seconds to score. Four seconds, now that's fast. They might not be able to do it. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, you ready? Go! Put it down, deal. Four, three, two, one. Okay, that was easy. Ready? Go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Put it down. Go get it. Four, three, two. Okay, good. You ready? Go. Put it down. Go, 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 go. Go get it, go get it. Four, three, two. One, game over. Next up, next up, next up, next up. You've got to attack with purpose, boys. Here we go. Down, 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 down. Quick. Four, three, two. Oh, game over. Okay. So, you see how much quicker they started moving the ball down at the defense, but also they were looking head down and not really looking up. They were looking a little bit to pass, but a lot of them going head down, trying to enter traffic and trying to finish. So you can start manipulating that, the time sensitive, the way that you're moving the ball, the spread that you're getting on the players, and then start to use different rules that affect your team. So it's important with all these drills that you take what we've done and then manipulate it into your own group. So if you have a lot of players who are really good on their right but no good on their left, then you start to go, okay, if you score on the left here, you get 50 points. Like what Coach Seb and Coach Sean have talked about, you, you manipulate the drills and the rules of the drills to get more scores on the side that you want to get it on. Does that make sense? That was quite a simple one. I hope it helps. I, maybe you haven't seen it yet. Okay. The next one I'm going to get is a drill that I've actually started using with my under 20s. So I find in transition, we catch the ball in one specific place a lot of the time. 
and I want you to watch it and then I'm gonna get some feedback to see if you guys have different places you get scores from. And we're gonna try and manipulate it into that. Is that cool? So boys, can I please have one line on the black line here and then one line at halfway. Let's go quick, in a hurry. Now this, this one I'm gonna start with no defenders just to show you what it is and we're gonna add a defender in after that, okay? So we're gonna start the ball over here and let's, can I get you two boys to run and get another basketball each quick? Quick, okay? So the way it works is Nick's gonna start by taking a dribble towards the three point line and other Nick is gonna sprint towards the free throw line. As Nick, little Nick, we're we gonna go little Nick or big Nick or what are we gonna do here? Little Nick. Little Nick, okay. He likes little Nick. Okay, so we're gonna throw the ball into little Nick and little Nick has to catch the ball and take one dribble and score. That's all I want him to do, catch the ball there, in, like in transition, catch, take one dribble and go score. It doesn't need to be a layup, it can be a floater, it can be whatever he wants it to be, but that's the rule. Okay, you ready to go? For, if we can get up 10 shots in the next 30 seconds, I'll be stoked. Ready, go. Good. One dribble, go get the rebound, Nick, big Nick. Unbelievable, this guy. Good, good, good. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, boys, come on. Good. Take one dribble, take, try and take one dribble. Good, oh yeah, okay, sick. Good, 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 good. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And freeze there, okay. I just want to touch back on something that's already been talked about. How many people saw them finish with their left hand? None of them, right? They, when they get the choice, they choose their strong hand every time. So touching back on Coach Seb, Coach Sean, putting it on the left hand, trying to make him finish. Okay, now can I please get Dylan and, what's your name at the back there, mate? Liam. Liam, can I get you guys down on the baseline for me, quick? In a hurry, would be most ideal. Thank you. So, same drill. Now we're adding a couple of defenders, okay? Now you're gonna start on the baseline. Let's go deal first. Liam, you come in behind him. So you're gonna go, it's only gonna be one defender. One defender. As Nick takes his dribble, Dylan's allowed to start closing out to the only guy who's gonna score. So he's allowed to come up from there. Now, he still only has one dribble to get a score. He can go whichever way he likes and finish whichever side he wants, but he only has the one dribble to get open, okay? Here we go, you ready to go? Let's see how it goes. Here we go. Good. It was a bit of a travel, I reckon. Here we go, here we go, let's go. Liam's up and then the shooter's gonna go down there. Quick. Good. Good. Oh, left-handed. How'd you be? Here we go. Shooter goes underneath the basket, guys. Shooter goes underneath the basket. Shooter goes underneath the basket. Who shot it? This guy. Here we go. Good. Shooter goes underneath the basket. Shooter goes underneath the basket. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Go. Little Nick. Go. Good. Oh, left it too late. Got to get out there. Here we go. You can close as soon as he takes the dribble. Good. Okay. Now, I'm gonna introduce a skill part of this. And you can manipulate, you can, you can take this and isolate it, go one on none to try and help yourself. As you catch it, so take the dribble for me, Liam. Oh, not Liam, that's Liam. What's your name? Kai. Kai. Kai, great name, Kai. So as we, as we take the dribble and I'm catching it here and Liam's closing out to me, I'm gonna catch the ball and I'm gonna catch it this way. I'm gonna take one dribble and I'm gonna go over and finish on that side. Does that make sense? So, key is catch, power dribble, and I'm going hop step over the top to finish to my left hand. How many of you reckon you can do that? One of you? Great, let's go. You ready? You ready? Here we go. Hit him. Good. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Next up, shooter goes under the basket. Good. Let's go, let's go, come on. Good. Go, quick, 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 come on. Good. That was a travel. Here we go. Not exactly. So try and get both, Liam, try and get both feet moving. Keep going, boys. Try and get both feet moving at the same time. So instead of one, two, you're trying to go over the top and jump onto two. Here we go. Exactly not that. Okay, freeze. Now, benefits of having two feet in the paint. So if I come over with that hop step and get to here, because I'm on two feet, I can choose which foot I want to use the next. So if I get to this point here and I'd like to step through on my right again, I can. Does that make sense? 
Okay, that's the benefit of being on two feet. So that's kind of what I would do. Now, how many of you get down the middle layups? How many of you get them on the side for in transitions? Give me something, guys. Here's side, a, yeah, yeah, a couple. Most of them on the side. So instead, you can move the dribble line up to there and have the cutter coming down there and attack through the baseline side. Okay, would you like, I feel like you don't need me to walk through that. Oh, would you like me to walk through that? You want me to go through that? Let's go, let's go, I love it. Come on guys, you gotta be interactive because I love feedback and I'm the center of attention, right? Okay, so basketball's up to here and we're gonna go, we're gonna take this line a little bit further back, okay? Now you're closing out to this player instead. So all it is, we're gonna take it wide, wide, like wide, wide, yep. Because in transition, the wider you can spread the court, the better off you can. So try and set up all your drills, if you're running any kind of finishing drills or transition drills, to set up the way you want to see the court. So that, that three on three, on, a three man weave into the torn one, by getting them to split and go either side of the key way, you can take that even further and go, you must touch the sideline before you can come and play. And you can still have the time restraint on it, but it helps them understand, spread the floor in their mindset and their habits, spread the floor before I go to the hoop. Yep, yes? Good, okay. So same thing, take one dribble, you're gonna hit Nick, you're closing out. Go, here we go. Good. Good. Good throw out. Let's go, who's next? Shooter goes under the basket. Good. Good. Confuse the defense as well by putting it there. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Quick, quick, quick. Good. Anyone gonna use that hop step I just taught you? Let's go. Good job, Dill. There you go. Well done, Dylan. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Quick. Okay, that's a quick one. Make sense? Now you can get into that. You can go into scoring. I haven't done any scoring. I just wanted to show you what it was about. Um, what Seb and Sean do really well in their drills is they add scoring on things. They add bonus points for X amount of things. So you can go, if you're really trying to focus on a certain finish, like the hop step that I was just demonstrating, you can go, okay, if you do that move and then you score, then you get double points. And then they'll start to then chase that to try and get the more points. And then you go, whoever doesn't get the most points has to do push-ups. Okay, now, what we're gonna do here, because I've gone through position of power, and Coach Seb's gone through on-ball screens. Okay, so on-ball screens in vogue, everyone loves them, I even use them. Okay, they're very important to know. Um, what not many people use is off-ball screens, especially at domestic basketball. And when you can integrate off-ball screening into your offenses, you're gonna get a lot more switches, crazy stuff happening, someone falls asleep on the other side and someone gets wide open, okay? So, I'm gonna start it with a one-on-one. -on -one. Where's Bob gone? He's over there, having a nap, he's having a nap. I'll bring Bob out again. He's getting a bit lonely over here, guys. Okay, so, we're gonna have I'll be up the top, and can I have two lines in the corner? Two lines in the corner, boys. Quick, in a hurry would be most ideal. Thank you there. All right, and I'll have the ball, please. Okay. Now, when we're talking about off-wall screens, most week we talk about pin downs, there are flares, there's uh, flex screens, all sorts of business. In domestic basketball, I think try and keep it spaced out and keep as many people on the perimeter, unless you have a legitimate seven-footer, I've seen a lot of six foot four, six foot five guys come in to wobble and all they know how to do is run the baseline and score. And that's not great for them because they're gonna to come to wobble level and struggle to play outside, which is gonna be their role moving up the chain. So the more you can keep it outside and then utilize their power position eventually like through games and find ways to get them into power positions without sitting them under the hoop. So by using this, maybe getting them to curl off the screen rather than to sit under the hoop and wait for it and seal up, okay? So in domestic basketball, keep it spread out. Keep your players on the perimeter. Let them play from outside because then they're all going to learn it. Unless he is legitimately or she is legitimate, if she's seven foot, put her in there because she's going to the Australian boomers, right? But what we're going to do here, Dylan's playing defense. Now, Dylan... Your rule is you can't go under the screen. You have to go over the screen. I don't care if you push him over the screen. Now, if you can push him over the screen. Right. But you can, go, you can push him over the screen, I don't care. But the rule is if either player touches Bob, okay, if either player touches Bob, it's three points to the opposition player. Does that make sense? Yep. Now, you can push him over. You can go chase him under. And it's your decision on what you do. So you can either curl it really hard or you can catch it and rip and go. Does that make sense? 
However you feel like you need to get it. We good with that? Okay, simulating an off-ball screen. Here we go. Ready? Good. Here we go, next ball, next ball, next ball. Get me the next ball. Goodness gracious, fall on sleep. Here we go. Whoa. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Catch it. Play. Good. Here we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Who's got the next ball? Quick. You're out. Let's go. Who's up? I got it. Okay. Good, good, good. One more, one more, one more. Here we go. Okay. So, they get the idea of running off the screen. Something not talked about off that ball screen, and I didn't talk about it for a specific reason, because I talked to Dylan about he's allowed to push Nick off the screen. Now, he didn't push Nick off the screen. If he did, then he'd be, uh, he'd be playing for the 18 ones with Nick, okay? But when they do push off the screen, we need to be smarter as cutters. So the screener can only do so much. He can be there, he can create space, she can create space, but there's only so much they can do. As the cutter, if I feel my player pressing up to try and push me off the screen, keep press me up, yep, I've got to slow down, walk him back, and then come off the screen and stick nice and tight to curl that screen to get over there, okay? Now, defense, I'm gonna give you a choice. You can go, go curl it over the top, or you can go underneath, okay? You can go underneath and meet him on the other side. Offense, you have two things you can do. Uh, three things, I'm gonna, I'm gonna upgrade you. You can have three things, they can only have two. How good is that? So you can curl the screen if they follow you. If they push you off, you can back cut to the hoop over the screen, yep. Or if they dive under, you can flare out and catch it and shoot it. Does that make sense? Okay. I wasn't sure there for a second. Throw me a ball. Throw me a ball, boys, here we go. Thank you, Nick, little Nick, here we go. Good, here we go. Who's next? I need another ball, boys. Okay. Are we making decisions or are we just running the drill? Let's make decisions, boys. Here we go. Oh! Left him under. Too big, too strong. Let's go. Throw me a basketball quick. Make decisions. Make decisions. Here we go. Make decisions. Good. Oh, and he didn't want to touch Bob and give up those three points. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, okay, good learning point, good, okay. Now, Kai, yes, that's right, right? Let's go, okay, so where did Dylan go? Under the screen, right? Now, you stopped and thought because you knew what you were meant to do, but you didn't actually execute it. What, would, what should have you have done to get open? Uh, put it around that way. No, so as he went underneath, and this is a very important teaching point for all of us as coaches. As you see him go underneath in your peripheral vision, bounce back out, catch it, and shoot it. Now, I feel like that's not what you love to do in games because it wasn't your natural reaction. Am I correct? Yeah? Do you like getting on the rim more? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, good. So, it's important to get comfortable with that idea because even if you catch it back here off the flare, you can still rip it to the hoop. Does that make sense? So it's just important to remember that. And that's for us, developing them as young people and them not really understanding it completely, for us to be able to know that, that we need to teach them those little things that help them get into the next set and understand what, how to use this. Because this means nothing if they can't use it. Does that make sense? Yes. yes, good, okay. Right, now we're gonna replace Bob. Bob is gonna, have, is gonna be one of their teammates in sets. So can I get Liam and Kai? Out there, please. Good. Now, you're going to have more options. So now we're adding the screener in. Liam, you're going to be my screener. Good. Yep. And you're little Nick's teammate. Okay. And you've got big Nick and Kai playing defense. Now, the rule is you can't switch it. Because, I mean, we, we can go through switching, but I want to go through not switching first. Now, Kai, it's your job. You can either gap it to give space to go underneath or go over the top. You can jam it up so that he can't flash to the hoop, but it's up to you guys to decide. Now, as an offense, you still have the three options, coming off, curling, going to the hoop, because they're not gonna be able to switch it. Switch, oh goodness. Switch it, okay? You can back cut him if he beats you up, yep. Or you can flare it out and I'll throw it over the top to you. Does that make sense? Nick? 
Same three options. Liam, if you're standing here and you see Kai ball watching, or uh, man watching, sorry, you can flash to the hoop, and that's another way we can get a score. Good with that? Yeah. High five. All right. Ready? I need a basketball. Yes. Thank you, Dylan. All right, you ready? Are you going to stand there, Kai? Because I'll just throw it to Liam, he can shoot it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here we go. You ready? Ready? Here we go. So, little Nick, did you make a decision or did you just run? I just ran. Okay, can we go again and let's make a decision this time? And I know he put you on the floor last time. That doesn't mean he's, he's a scary human being. I want you to hit him. Yeah? Ready? Here we go. Good. Good. So, got there, Nick. That's a great cut and that's a great idea by you seeing Nick beat you up and going back door, okay? Now, Liam, when we're standing here, we've got to be very, very cognizant of here and what's happening here because you could get that flash at any moment. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can even reverse curl it and flash it straight to the hoop. We good with that? Yeah. Okay, so that's how you add in place the drill. You can get into three on three, okay, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But that's one that you can get into and just make them play. They get used to having defenders around them, making decisions. It's important you understand that either player can score and that they understand when to do it. Um, now, if they were switching it, the only the thing I would say straight away, if they want to switch it, so you can add that in later, because a lot of defences do that. They'll just switch everything and hope for the best. Just get the screen at a flash straight at the hoop. If they get in there, the man's going up, flash straight at the hoop, you get wide open. That's what we do at every level uh, with any screens and gets everybody open, okay? So that's the way you uh, have a solution for a switching defence, okay? Good with that? Yep. Yes, let's go. How good are these guys? Okay, now... We're going to go, Deal, you can sit down for this one, mate, because I'm going to get the big boys to beat each other up a little bit. Can I get three people around the outside of the key? Don't care who they are. Of course, Big Nick gets out there. Okay, and then three defenders. Basketball me. Now, this looks very similar to another drill that was run. Uh, Coach Sean had it with the, the rule of you have to have a dribble handoff. My rule for this one is you must pass it and set a screen away from the ball before you can score, okay? Now it's important that when we pass it, that person doesn't just grab it, put their head down and dribble. So within that first away screen, they must be looking at what's happening on the court and trying to get a pass into that player. Then they can play live and let them play. Yep, now you can go into the um, burst that Sean was doing before. So you can throw it in, go six offenses in a row and then switch it over and then go through that if you want to. It's up to you. I like going offense to defense if they can get a stop. So they get rewarded for stopping the ball. We good with that, boys? Kai, you're standing in the key way again. Right, here we go. Here we go. You can pass it to anyone and you've got to set an away screen before you can score. Here we go. you got two teammates. Yep, good. Oh, okay. Freeze. Is that on or away? My guy. Okay, so I want you to set a screen away. Here we go. Here we go. Good. Got open. Screen away. Oh, he got open. There you go. Great decision making by Nick. Nick, why did you make that decision? Because he was up on top. Great decision. All right. So, offense gets to keep the ball. We're going again. Here we go. Good. Oh, good kill. And Liam's got to play after that. Good. Now we're playing. We're live, guys. We're live. Standing still. Okay, good. Another one. Let's go. Defense, you've got to get a stop to get the ball. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Kai right, sitting back in the keyway again. Good, go set a screen. Good, oh, okay. Good. Okay, good. Now, another teaching point. Screening, um, illegal screening and things like that, offensive uh, fouls. Um, Kai, what you didn't see there, which I was about to explain to you, I know Nick was probably having a good chat with you there. When you set the screen, it's called setting the screen, not shepherding a player, yep. So you have to get to a spot, you stop, and they run into you. So as an offensive player, if you're setting a screen that your player closes the gap and hits them, then it's automatically a foul. So you make sure they're stopping and the guy's running into you, and then that's important for your offensive players to be able to run their players into, into the screen. Yep. So that's an important distinction to make if you ever see that, where they run and they do that into their screen, because I've got four, I have six, seven eight players at domestic basketball who do that, and it annoys me to no end, okay? They run in, they go, I'm setting a screen. 
and like they're shocking somebody. You just got to run in, stop, and get to the spot. That's all you got to teach. So if you can get through that when they're playing, that's really good. So that's a three on three, and you can play out a burst, whatever you want out of that. Good with that, boys? Good? Go on. Okay. So, we're attack. Yeah, I'm going to try and open it up a little bit for you guys. Okay. Look at this. The exodus has begun. Okay. So. Okay, hands up if you coach a under 16s or higher division team. Cool, hands up if you coach an under 14s team. Okay, cool, so you're about to move into this. So, welcome to the world. Zone, it sucks, uh, unless you're playing it. Um, so, most, most common zone you'll ever see in your life is a two three, which is two players at the top, three players at the bottom. Where are the open spots in this? Hands up. Yes, let's go. Glenn. In between the zone. Right here? Yep. Yep. So there's open spots here. Behind the yep. zone. Yep. Behind the zone. Back here. Anyone else? Before he answers all the questions? Top of the key. Yeah, top of the key. Top of the key right here. Yep. And then there's two more. Hit behind the guard. Right here? Or right here? Here. Inside there. Yep. Yeah. Good. Okay. So. When you're designing a zone offense, your whole job is number one, to create a disadvantage, and number two, hit the disadvantage spots in the zone, right? So if I had one play here, that player's matching that player up. So that's more, more of a man than it is a zone. If I have one play here, that player's matching that player up. So we need to create a disadvantage. Where would you guys put, this is gonna be fun, because <laughs> I'm gonna get a zone offense out of this and I'm loving it. Okay, where would you guys put a second player in that, just that side to create a disadvantage. Let's say this guy's got the ball. There. So you'd have a play here. Like that. So we have a play here. Okay, so if he's guarding him, then we've got a player who's open under the hoop or that player needs to drop and get him. So if this player, let's imagine the ball gets swung to here because we want to create that close out and this player's open, who reckons this guy's going to go to him? Everybody? Yep. yep. So where's our next player got to be to get us an open shot? Top of the key, right? Right here? Yep. And where, do we want him to stay there? To the basket. To the basket? Yep. So we can cut him to the basket. Now, that's a really good one. That's a real common one, high, low, playing one person in the high post, one person in the low post. Uh, I think that the ad, um, Paul, sorry, losing my mind. That ad of having him in the short corner, a lot of people will set him up on the post and that can create congestion, which makes it not a disadvantage situation because they're in front and they can see it. When you put a player behind the zone, all of a sudden, the guy at the top's going like this, which creates confusion, which we like, yep? So if you can do that more often, that's great. Now, I'll show you one that I actually stole off a Southwest Slammers coach, it's hilarious. He's actually currently the new marketing coordinator for the Perth Wildcats, Sam Foto. Sam Foto. I stole this one off him because I saw it and, he, and I begged him to give it to me. Okay, so we had, we start with these four players out and I start with a, with a post guy, not on the low post, but in between the keyway. So right in the middle, yep. So already they're deciding, is this guy going to him, is he going to him, or is he going to him? They don't know, okay? If this guy's got the ball, this guy's gonna be here. So that means he'll be open to pass it into there. When we get the ball into there, and I think that the two ways you can create disadvantages is cutting and screening. Yep, now we have another set we run at NBL one, but this one's quite good for, low, for, for junior teams because it gets them moving. As soon as the ball touches that player, as soon as he catches it, this player cuts baseline. Now, one of two things will happen. That player gets open, or the defense flattens to cover it, which leaves this open. The next cut is coming from where the ball came from and they're cutting over into the paint. So if the defense did flatten, this player is wide open for a shot. Does that make sense? And then, even better, if they flatten and this player comes down and they guard him, this player can turn around and shoot a layup or a shot. So now all of a sudden you've got shots all over the place. You still have this player up here. If these guys have all dived down because they're scared, you got hit or hit and you got a shot. 
okay? And for continuation purposes, this player cuts through, out to that place. You've got this player running out to the baseline here. You've got that player there. You can kick the ball out, swing it over, and you've got the same set on the other side. Is the, uh, the post player who catches it, is he playing back to the basket? So originally playing back to the basket, catching it. First look is the baseline. We want to keep him back to the basket because we want him to look. Then I want him to turn yeah. a little bit. So over their shoulder, they'll see more. They'll see more over the side, and they'll be able to throw it into the player that's cutting down the middle if they've seen everyone flatten out. Okay, and they can throw there. Otherwise, they can. By that point, they're almost turned around anyway, and they can play basketball to the front. Does that make sense? And and it's really important. Like, I know there's a lot of X's and O's here, and this is our favourite thing. Co coaches, we're all here because we love designing cool, sexy plays that, in 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 uh, in conversation, work perfectly all the time. Yep. Uh, it's important that you make sure your players still play. So I've, I put this in, but if you see an opening, I want you to go for it. Yep. Because a lot of the time, and this is what happens with my stupid under 20s, they'll catch it and they'll do it exactly the way I told them to do it. But this guy was open for a layup the whole time. Yep. And I get in a yelling match with my big man. So it's really important that you go catch it, but I want you to look, but also look to score. If you're aggressive, everyone's going to cover you and someone else will get open. So make sure you preach that message. Yeah, the plays are there, the sets are there, this is there, whatever. But go score if you have the opportunity to score. And then guys will just switch on. They'll go, oh, okay, where am I? Okay, what if I'm catching it here, where's the scoring opportunity going to be? All of a sudden, they change the way they start thinking about the game. Does that make sense? Any other questions on that one? Any other questions on zone offense? No? Nothing. Good. That's good. See, I'm, this is how good I am, guys. Okay? But, like I said, best way to create disadvantage is have players in positions that are weak in the zone, cutting, and screening. And you get somebody over. That's it. Yes? Um, how do you train that to six or seven players on a training night? So, I, it's, it's, it is tough. I would... First thing I would do is I go five and oh, just to show them the basic structure of it. Like I would show them. So uh, it's someone I was talking about. Seb's going to know what this is, but it's ways of learning. So like seeing it, doing it. What is it? You know? What, does anyone know what it's called? Is it? Styles. Hey. Learning styles. learning styles. Okay, cool. So I would draw it up for them. I would speak it while I'm drawing it up, so that they can hear it, and then I'd get them out there and I'd get them to do it. And that's the third way they can take it in. That's about as, many, as much as you can do without like having video on it and showing them like, in, in flow how it happens. Um, and then once I've done five on I'll break it down and do one, two, three, or three play, the strong side action, and then have you a couple of defenders in there that are in that area and break it just down to that. And then once you go back out to five out, you show them that and then you show them how to reverse the ball and run the same thing on the other side. Try and keep it simple, try and keep it continuity. Uh, that's just a word for a fancy word for the same thing running over and over again in different, on different sides of the court. Uh, if it's always running on one side of the court, the defense just stays set on one side. If you can reverse the ball, then the defense has to move, which then opens up other gaps as well. So continuity, I think, would be a good one. But yeah, training it, I think um, just have it, break it down to three players who are on the strong side or the four, two, three, four players that are on the strong side have them run it against the defense that would be in that area and then play it out of that. That's the best way you can do it. It is unfortunate with six or seven guys, you can't really get out there and go five on five, but with the constraints you have, you can still run stuff. Nothing, okay. No, no, okay. Any other questions on anything I did? Jackson, would you be able to show that? Have them yeah, let's that go. Right there? I got it. You ready? How good is this gonna be? See, now, now, if they listen, I'm an amazing coach. If they don't listen, it was their fault. All right, I need five of you, let's go. Big Nick being one of them. Any five, let's go. Okay. So, can I please have, I want to get you because you're large. Can you please be between the block, but just go in the middle, middle uh, hash, please. Okay, and let's go, I need one basketball, boys, because we're playing basketball. Fantastic. Okay, one person in the corner. Dead. One person in the corner. That that is an awesome basketball. You can go strong side 45. You know where that is. And you can go point, point and a little nick. You can go. You can go right here on the 45. Okay. So now, Nicholas, where did I ask you to be? Okay. So it's really important for him because in that zone, 
you got one, you got the guy in the middle, so we want to hit the middle to make him cause confusion. I even better like to run it so I step him all the way out here, so it makes him now, they have to come out the key way to cover him, okay, which opens up more gaps. The first set is we throw it in, let's just say we throw it in the big fella, okay, first cut straight away, Kai's going to go baseline all the way to the other side, he's looking for the ball, and if we can get it to him, we get it to him. As soon as I run this the first time in any game, the defense just goes and sucks down because they all want to stop the back cut because it gets wide open on the first time you'll ever run it. As soon as he's cut, the timing is, as soon as he hits the middle of the keyway, this guy's cutting over into the middle and Kai, you're going to go all the way out to the other side. You've got that guy in the middle. Hang on, so just freeze there. So we're looking at that one next. Now, at that moment, we, are, we got asked about back to the basket before. So Nick's caught it, looked at that one. As he's looking at this one, he's turning over that right shoulder, looking at that cutter, and then he can play if he's got the space one-on-one -on -one of the hoop. Now, Nick's such an aggressive beast. That's probably a good move for us as a team, right? He can finish either side and, or dunk on somebody if we want, right? So he can catch it, and if they've flattened out, he, he might even be able to get a right-hand layup out of this because he's covered the big guy. Yep, now, if that doesn't happen... What's your name again, mate? Gary. Gary, what a great name. Okay, you're going to get to where Nick was. Now, Nick... If you caught it, you haven't been able to get anything, okay? You're going to kick it out, the lamb, okay? He's going to reverse over the little Nick, and you've got the same thing happening on the other side. So you throw it in the big fella, baseline cutter, little Nick, hang on, okay? And then cutting over as soon as he reaches in the middle. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Sean? Yes, I've got a question. Let's go. Does big Nick then flare out? Yes, so big Nick will flare out, and then he'll become that player on the other side. Now, there are a few other things you can add in. I've, because I've got the big uglies, I've added the baseline cutter goes out, but to the 45. So I get some rotation on the weak side, because otherwise the same guy's running baseline all the time, and, and it, you know, they get tired because they're lazy. Um, and also I can get my best shooters in positions where they're cutting baseline and getting to the other side for a 45 shot, and we can swing it over to them. So it's just about personnel and what you've got. If you've got a gazelle that just runs all day, like in my under 16s, I've got Marley Brown, who's just, crazy he just goes across and across I just sit him on the baseline and let him run that cut all day long because eventually he'll get open or they'll just be so enamored with him they'll sit him on the sit everyone on the baseline so it's just up to your personnel whatever you've got and you can add so Liam's here you can add him flare, uh, flare screening someone else on the other side and then rotating out and playing out of that so you get different looks but it's it's all about taking what you're seeing here and making it your own anyone else no Anything else, Sean? Any other questions? No, uh, I just have one. So Did you like that one, no, by the way? Okay. Yeah, I'm you a just... visual learner, so I need yeah, to yeah. see it on the court. You messaged Sam about it. I asked it for three months. Okay, so... Uh, I, forget, I forget that first one you mentioned. Do you mind just, just playing that one out? The first one I mentioned? Yeah, where the guy's sitting behind. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, let's go. Love that. Love that. And that was Paul's draw up. Okay, so we've got one guy in the corner. Yep, Nick, you can go um, dead corner, please, or short corner, whatever you want to call it. Gary? Great name, 45, okay. Liam, let's get you a bit further over and Little Nick, let's get you a bit further over. So we want to space the floor a little bit more on this one. Actually, you know what? No, Little Nick, let's get you high post. So we've got Little Nick in the high post, right in the middle, mate, right in the guts, yep. Okay, what we're looking at here is that Big Nick's in the short corner, okay. If we rotate it to Kai, throw the ball to Kai, thank you. Okay, if I'm on defense here, I've got a choice. I'm either covering the beast, yep, and he's wide open. Now, if you put your best shooter there, that's a problem for the defense. Or I've got to close out here. Now, if I close out to this, we've got Nick right there. And that's what we're talking about, that, that, that rotation, because the big guy in the middle is then going to have to come and cover that, okay? And by doing that, little Nick can cut down the guts and get a wide open layup on the left-hand side of the hoop. <laughs> okay? So... With Seb's practice and all these drills that he's done, okay, you'll get that out of it. Now, after the, if you get it in, if you can't get it in there, you can rotate the ball around, move both the posts over, have a baseline cutter, and you know continuity through that. I just drew it up on the board and hope that someone have have some good answers, which you did. Fantastic guys, you, you're all great coaches, okay. Um, but if that's everything, anyone else with any other questions? Yes. So, what age do you start introducing screening? Off ball screening, you can start introducing it whenever they can get the concept of pass and cut. So on my last uh, one, I touched on pass and cut a little bit. Um, 
for the first couple of years with my under now under 16s then under 12 14s i think they were when i first picked them up i did five out pass and cut only for like a whole year and then i started introducing screening and actions like that so if they can get the idea of passing and cutting they'll understand the next process which is passing and then going to screen somebody and that's when I would start introducing it. So it's it's really a, a personal thing for your group. If you think they're at a, a level where they understand the basic rules of, of moving in basketball, off without the ball and with the ball, then you can start setting screens for people. Yeah, But yeah, it's, it is a personal thing. It, it is unfortunate in that there's not like a set age for everybody. It's like growing though. Like some kids will grow when they're 18 and some kids will grow when they're 12. It's just not set, so you just gotta work within the confines of your group. Anything else? <coughs> Fantastic, guys. I just want to say a big thank you to these young men who have come out and helped us today. Big clap for them. Okay. It's, a, it's a long Sunday, for, especially for us who have been at Wobble, so well done to them. I want to say thank you to our other coaches and Liam for helping set this up. So well done, guys. Great job. And my last thank you goes out to all of you. It is Sunday. It is a horrendous time to be out listening to coaches talk about coaching but you've all done a fantastic job and i appreciate the fact that you all came out and did all that because it means you're actually committed to helping your players get better and that's what we're all in it for so well done to all of you well done Thank you. okay good if you have any questions now you can stick around sean seb liam myself will all be here for another 15 20 minutes how long it takes us to pack up um, and then if you have any questions on anything we're feel free to come up to us